I was asked what wiring I use for my hookups. This is the uh, thin wire I use, it's 30 gauge, and it comes on these little packets of reels. You get quite a lot on each one. And uh, the really nice thing is it's really good quality wire, and it's also silicon covered, so you can just strip off the uh, covering with your fingertips, and it rolls up into twisted runs very easily. I like to use connectors rather than hard soldering. It makes uh, troubleshooting easier. And uh, I would just say, go and get yourself one of these little DuPont connector sets. Most of the connectors you won't use. Uh, and as you can see in the top middle there, I've run out of three pins. The other thing is on the left, the silver things on the left, are the male pins. You'll barely use them most of the time because the pins will be on the flight controller. But the right hand side are the females that go in the, these DuPont cases and uh, you'll use a lot of them. So find a source of uh, just reels of these and uh, like that you can just add more as you need them to this kit. Also, if you'd be taking ends off of servos or uh, taking a servo out that's broken, just take off the uh, free pin connector off the end and put it in your stores. Don't waste them. You'll need to get yourself a really nice crimper. It's worth spending a bit more money on these and getting a decent one. And uh, this is the connector as it comes off the sprue. On the left is cable clamp and in the middle is where the wires get make the electrical connection they could crimped over as well i'd also recommend you get some sort of magnification i found these sort of headband magnifying glass things really good because you don't you're not holding them and they come in a variety of powers and this is one of those dupont connectors it, i place it in the crimp you see it's a 0.25 millimeter and to stop it falling out, I click it down just a little bit, then prepare your wire. For these thin, thin ones, I like to strip a bit more than normal and fold it over. And then you put it into the clamp, clamp it down with your hand, and you get this result. Now I find on the very thin wire, the actual wire clamp at the back doesn't really bite in very well so I tend to use just a pair of flat needle nose pliers just to cinch that up. This is the camera support I use. I just made this up in Tinkercad. The holes are angled to fit the O3 unit uh, and it points the camera quite a long way down. You might not find you want to use the top ones. Just screw it in with the bottom and you can adjust the angle. VHB tape on the bottom and with a bit of fiddling you can push it into the nose you might need to come for, come in from the back and it sticks in like that the back just holds on with the magnet and the bottom and the aerial goes into the clamp at the top and you end up with a nice removable nose here I've just painted up a couple of coats of primer light sanding and then the top color i find that's good to put paint on it because 3d prints if they get dirt on them they really it gets in between the layers and you can't get it out and they start looking shabby these are one of the 12 volt adapters so it's a dc to dc adapter takes anything up to 6s in actually it takes about 7s in and it gives in this case a 12 volt solid output that's going to be for the LED lights. We have power in on the left, and I've set up two leads of 12 volts on the right. This is close up on the LED lights. They've got a sticky bit on the bottom. And if you peel that off, you can see cut points where you can cut these LEDs. But where are the cut points? If you look at that tiny little dot, that's where each of the cut points is. I'll show you here, there's the dots in the middle. And if I flip it over, you can see those correspond to the cut points underneath. Now this 
LED tape does not like bent in in the horizontal it kinks up so where I have angles like that I'm going to have to make a cut point and do a little bit of wiring this is the tangled mess of cables that I'm going to need to put into place first thing to do is to route the cable underneath the base plate and stick it down I've used E6000 of course and it takes a while to go off so I've left that for well I left it overnight to stick with some weights on and then routing the cable up to the front this is for the O3 I just use little, little dabs of uh, hot glue should you ever need to take it out isopropyl alcohol will release the glue and you can see that's fairly neat now everything's stuck into place then you can see the servos come in here and I'm not happy with those servo leads they're far too short but everything's in place and let's see what happens so here we are I haven't yet put it on power I've fitted the wings all cables are in for the main surfaces and everything there's also a 12 volt power supply just down here which is running cables to the back here for the lights the two servo cables they're way too tall so I'm going to extend them and the TPS crossfire cable is just here that's all plugged in I have done a multimeter, a multimeter test and it looks okay in that respect this is a 6S battery I have a TBS smoke stopper. Now this isn't sophisticated or anything. It's just a great big resistance and fusible link. So if something draws too much power, that should stop it and hopefully stop a smoke. Stop the smoke. Ah, this is always the moment I always feel a bit of trepidation. I've done all the checks I can. All cables go to the right places. The cable matches. I don't think I can test anything more. Let's plug it in. Yay! Got the light underneath. Whew! It works. Have a quick look underneath for the TBS crossfire. Yes, that's saying it's existing. The servos are in, but they're not connected to the surfaces yet. I like to centre the servos from the from the uh, from the flight controller itself. Servo testers, their centre points can be a bit wishy-washy. There is enough power that comes through here to run most things. So everything, the motors initialised, uh, the switch is initialising. Is that turned on? Let's have a feel. Well, that's turned on, so I don't want to leave it on for too long. Not on that. Okay. That's great. I'm going to disconnect the uh, camera at the front. This has been painted and everything. I'm going to disconnect that because I don't want that overheating. Uh, until I can get the switch working. That will be in this I, I now have set up in the next one. So all I'm going to do now... Is center the servos, make certain they're operational, and I'm going to do that via the iNav, and then I can glue them in and fit the servo arms and everything else. Wonderful! The servo leads have been extended, not by a huge amount, but that will allow me to route them neater within the plane's bay. The last thing I'm going to do is if I look at the servo push rods these are the push rods supplied and they're not very well they're quite bendable I don't want this flexing so what I have is some carbon tube I don't know if it will show there I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to sleeve each of these push rods with the carbon tube and that will allow me to have more confidence in these will not bend and there's the push rods that have been sleeved with the carbon tube it doesn't have to go all the way but it just stops it bending and 
and that's roughly in place on the uh, elevons. I haven't done that up really tight. Uh, I'm almost certainly going to have to adjust it after the fact. So they're just loosely attached at the moment. Now I can move on to sticking down the servos and tidying up the wiring underneath the wings.